All right, welcome to my channel, Math and Language. This is James, your Math and Language instructor. Today, we're going to tackle about how to do costing chapter 5 application problem for food business. So from the previous video, we have tackled about the percentage, the cost and markup, and selling price, and discount. Today, we're going to tackle about the application problems and how to do the actual costing. So let's start. What is costing ABA? It is to determine the cost and to figure out the selling price of your product. So, bakit ito importante? Una, malalaman natin kung magkano yung food cost dun sa recipe at kung magkano natin ipipresyo ang bawat product natin para makuha natin yung target profit. At sa every successful food business is knowing food costing. Next, what do you need and what to expect? First, what food or product are you going to sell? Leche plan nga ba? Cordon Blue? Pulboron? Or Milk Tea? Pangalawa, potential buyers. Sini mostly bibili ng produkto natin? Mga bata? Estudyante? Teenager? Or mga yuppies na? Pangatlo, set recipe. Pangapat, ingredients. Ano at saan tayo bibili ng ingredients? SM nga ba? Pure Gold? Or sa wet market? Alright, moving on, preparation. We need weighing scale kasi importante ito sa costing. Lastly, math and accounting. Yes, may math talaga and we really need math. Kung walang math, mas mahirap yun. Let's have some terminologies. First one, we have the raw food cost. It's the cost of all the edible ingredients that go into the food you will sell to your customers. Second, labor cost. Labor cost, you need to pay yourself also. Or if you're going to employ someone, syempre kailangan mo silang bayaran. Packaging cost. It's the cost of the packaging of your product. Kung pwede, sa box ba ito lalagay? Sa tub? Next, we have overhead cost. Overhead cost naman, ito yung falls outside of food cost and labor. Tulad na ito yung renta, equipment, taxes, or yung kuryente or tubig. Markup ting amount na ina-add natin sa cost price of goods to cover the overhead and profit. Kailangan natin talaga ng markup kasi hindi lang pwede dito tayo kumukuha ng tubo at yung pambayad dun sa renta or electricity at sa mga ibang overhead expenses. Alright, so meron tayong markup, meron tayong markup rate. Pinagkaiba lang, markup rate is by percent. Okay, so next we have as purchase cost to yung current market price or the price as purchase and the unit upon which it can be bought. For example, sa recipe na kalagay, we need 2 tablespoons sugar. Hindi ka naman pwedeng bumili lang ng 2 tablespoons sugar sa market, di ba? So, bibilin mo siya ng per kilo. So, nangyari, per kilo ay 30 pesos. So, yung APC mo is 30 pesos per kilo. Ayun yung nilalagay natin sa costing mamaya, which will be explained later. Alright, so for the last terminology, we have Ms. Tevez, a baker, who will explain buffering. Ms. Tavis, could you explain what buffer rate is? Hi, James. So for the buffer, the reason why we add 10% to the raw food cost is to protect you just in case the as purchase cost of ingredients would fluctuate. There are several reasons. Maybe a change of supplier or even bad weather can cause an increase in prices too when goods can reach certain areas. And other market factors would make prices fluctuate. So that's why we put an allowance of 10%, which is called a buffer. All right, thank you for that, Ms. Tevez. You're welcome, James. All right, let's move on to the actual costing. First, we have the food cost form. In the food cost form, you will see the name of item, the servings, ingredients, APC per unit, cost per unit, recipe quantity, and all of that will be tackled one by one. So let's start. Let's start with having a sample recipe. So ingredients para sa leche flan. So I got this in the internet, YouTube. So the ingredients are sugar, 10 tablespoons, 20 egg yolks, evaporated milk, condensed milk, and vanilla extract. And it's good for 10 tubs, medium size. Next step we're going to do is to fill out the ingredients column and the recipe quantity. Afternoon, dun tayo sa APC per unit or as purchase cost per unit. 
paano mo siya binili? Kunyari, pumunta ka ng SM, bumili ka ng sugar na 1 kilo for 50 pesos. So, lalagay mo 50 pesos for 1,000 grams. Gawin na natin grams na lang, imbes na kilo. Next, we have to find the cost per unit. Cost per unit naman ay alamin natin yung bawat grams or magkano ang bawat gram or magkano ang bawat ml. So, simple lang. Yung APC, divide mo sa unit. So, 50, di divide mo sa 1,000. So, we get 0.05. So, punta sa 7 pesos each. Uh, Lagi nyo lang 7 pesos each. And for the evaporated milk, yung 41, di divide mo ng 370. Alamin mo magkano sa isang ml, magkano ito. So, 0.1108. And condensed milk, 0.1268. And lastly, for vanilla extract, that's 1.925 kada ml ng vanilla extract. Next, dun tayo sa cost per unit in peso. Paano natin siya hahanapin? We have the formula cost per unit times recipe quantity. So, yung 0.05 for the sugar, ita times lang natin or multiply lang natin sa 125. So, the answer is 6.25. Next, we have for the egg yolk. So, for the egg, that's 7 pesos each. So, if you're going to multiply it by 20, we have 140. And same with the other three ingredients. Alright, moving on. We have the raw food cost. For the raw food cost, the formula is sum of the cost per unit in peso. So, total mo lang lahat dun sa cost per unit in peso. And the answer is 341.875. Now, the buffer cost, which was explained a while ago. It's to help or protect us just in case mag-fluctuate yung price ng ingredients. So, it's normally 5 to 10%. So, for this one, for this educational video, we're going to put 10%. So, 10% kukunin natin sa raw food cost. If we get 10% of 341.875, that will be 34.188. Next, let's go to the subtotal. So, just add the raw food cost plus buffer cost. Moving on, we have the packaging cost. So, let your plan, kailangan mo lang dito ng microwavable. So, as per cheese cost per unit, that's 100 pesos for 20 pieces ng microwavable. So, cost per unit, ilan ba ang isang microwavable? So, that will be 5 pesos. At sa recipe quantity natin, dahil sampu yung leche plan na serving, so sampu din yung microwavable na kailangan natin. So, that will be 5 times 10 equals 50 pesos. Now, to get the subtotal with packaging cost, i-add lang natin yung subtotal plus dun sa 50 pesos na packaging cost. That will be 426.06. So now that we know the food cost and the packaging cost, which is 426, we need to know the overhead and labor cost. For this one, we're going to use a markup rate of 30% for the, to compensate for the overhead and labor cost. Now, disclaimer, This is a general markup rate for small businesses and food businesses. Moving on, so we get 30% of 426, so that will be 127 and 82 centavos. Now let's find out the total cost. Total cost naman ay yung subtotal with yung packaging cost, add mo dun sa overhead and labor cost. So that will be 553 and 88. So paano naman kunin ang total cost per serving? Total cost per serving naman, yung total cost mo, divide mo dun sa number of servings. Remember, dun sa recipe, sabi good for 10 siya. So, divide mo lang ng 10, ang sagot ay 55 and 39. Alright, and dito na tayo sa markup rate for selling price. But before we go to that, we need to discuss factors that affect the selling price. So, ano nga ba yun? So, una yung target market. Target market, ito yung mga grupo ng potential customers mo na willing bumili ng produkto mo. Nasama na dito yung buying power, yung demographics, at yung income, income nila. Next is logistics. Kailangan talaga natin ng transportation to get the product and how are we going to deliver the product. So, makaka-affect yung sa selling price natin. So, medyo nung tataas yung cost natin. Which is kasama naman din siya dun sa markup rate for overhead and labor costs. Next, we have competitors. Dito, medyo crucial din to. Kung ibebenta mo ang isang produkto mo ng 100 pesos at yung competitor mo ibebenta lang ng 90, mostly ang mga buyers, syempre doon siya bibili sa mas mura, di ba? 
The fourth one is the cost of production. Kaya tayo ng costing para malaman natin kung magkano natin isa-sell ang isang produkto. And lastly, we have the demand for the product. Kung mas mataas ang demand, mas mataas mo pwede siyang ipresyo. At kung mababa ang demand, hindi ka pa din pwedeng magtaas ng presyo. Kasi walang bibili. At malulugi ka lang lalo. Alright, so dahil alam na natin yung factors na nag affect sa selling price, pwede tayo mag-assume ng markup rate for selling price natin. Again, yung 50% na nilagay ko dito is just an example disclaimer. ha. Huh? So, it depends pa rin dun yung some factors ng selling price mo. So, dahil ginamit na natin yung markup rate, for example, na 50%, hanapin na natin yung selling price. So, paano kunin ng selling price? It is a total cost per serving times the quantity 1 plus markup rate for selling price. So, that will be yung 55.39 mo multiply natin sa 1.5. Ang sagot ay 83.09. So, i-round up na lang natin para mas convenient, that will be 85. Dahil nakuha na natin yung selling price, let's go to the profit per serving. So, para makuha yun, we need the selling price ma-minus mo sa total cost per serving, which is 29.61. Moving on, din tayo sa projected sales. Projected sales makukuha natin sa selling price multiply by the number servings in the recipe. So, yung selling price natin ay 85 at yung sa leche plan, that's good for 10. So, 85 times 10 is 850. And lastly, we have the projected profit. Paano ko natin kunin to? Yung profit per serving, the times natin ng 10. Kasi diba 10 servings yung leche plan dun sa recipe? Ngayon, 29.61 times natin ng 10 is equal to 296.10. So this is the end of the 5 chapter video for how to do costing for small food business. If you would like to comment and suggest another Madden language video, please comment down below and all the five chapters are in the description box. I would also like to thank Ms. Maan, Ms. Tevez, Vince, Andre Tendido, Dennis Ang, and Christian Santos for helping me in this video. Again, this is James, your math and language instructor. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.